Our next contestant, Deborah Lambie. McDreamy. McDreamy. Please welcome Deborah Lambie. Ladies and gentlemen, my mother is a psychiatrist. When people first meet her, they get so frightened, they just open their mouth and ridiculous stuff starts to come out. For example, oh, so you're a psychiatrist, are you? How many psychiatrists does it take to change a light bulb? Just one. The light bulb has got to want to change. <laughs> or worse, how do you tell the difference between the patients and the psychiatrists and the psychiatric hospital? The patients get better and leave. <laughs> <laughs> then my mum just stares at them with her, I am so analysing you right now face, and things get really awkward. I found this banter amusing, and it's my theory that it was these jokes not a will to help the poor, the sick, and the downtrodden that led me to take the pre-med course at Otago University. So after my year of eat, sleep, study, repeat, eat, sleep, <laughs> study, repeat was over, I was about to get an email that would change my life and tell me if I had been accepted into medical school or not. My heart was beating at a hundred miles an hour. My hands were cold and clammy. Beads of sweat forming on my forehead. I opened the email. My eyes focused in on one word. Successful! I had been accepted into a medical store. My eyes opened wide and I burst out into a deluge of tears. I'm going to have to live at the library. <laughs> My friends will all be nerds. My life is over. <laughs> My mother, the psychiatrist, sensibly prescribed for me a treatment regime of watching medical dramas on television. <laughs> this will help with your acute stress reaction, she informed me. So my best friend and I spent the rest of the day watching Grey's Anatomy, Scrubs and ER. I started to feel significantly more hopeful. On these shows, medical students certainly weren't all just nerds in the library memorising textbooks. I decided that for me, being a medical student would be just like being on Grey's Anatomy, drama, romance, McDreamy, and steamy. <laughs> so after a good dose of this, I felt a tap on my shoulder. Deb, my best friend said, can I talk to you about something? Somewhere private? It's embarrassing. I was confused. What on earth could my best friend want to talk to me about that was more embarrassing than the things I already knew about her. <laughs> then, before I could blink an eyelid, she launched in with a lengthy rant about her change in bowel motion, the birds and the bees, and sexually transmitted disease. I had never heard the word bowel before. How did it relate to motion? Where was this coming from? Then the penny dropped. She thought that my acceptance into medical school had magically instilled in me all of the medical knowledge of a doctor. <laughs> so it was a relief when medical school finally started. First up, examination skills. Can you remember the last time you were examined? Exposed in all your glory? The thought was enough to send me hiding under the desk, holding on to the chair legs for dear life. Is there anybody here called Deborah Lambie? The lecturer called out in a cruel twist of fate. She's hiding under her desk, miss. My 
my type A tattletale class male said, sabotaging my safety spot. I peered out from under the desk, trying unsuccessfully to pretend I'd just been picking up a pen off the floor. <laughs> okay, good, the lecturer said. You can examine Paul's respiratory system. Paul McDreamy stood up, tall, dark, and handsome. I looked at him. My face turned steamy. He unbuttoned his shirt. My breathing quickened. He slipped the shirt over his shoulders. Our eyes met, my vision turned steamy, and everything went black. <laughs> I came to with the entire group of medical students panicking around me. I can't find her pulse! <laughs> I think she's dead! <laughs> Our entire future medical workforce, no use in a medical emergency. <laughs> so if I had thought my graduation from Grey's Anatomy to medical school was crazy, Graduating to the wards was another leap into the unknown. And patients were disturbingly fast at cottoning on to the fashionable new way to pass time on the wards. Terrorising me. I was asked to take blood from Mr Smith, a painter who'd suffered a stroke. And I have a really terrible fear of needles, they really get under my skin. <laughs> Mr. Smith looked at me trying to take the cap off the needle. It's not your first time, is it? He growled. Ah, I said. Get on with it, he said. Needle in. Ah, yelled Mr. Smith. His eyes rolled back in his head. He started frothing at the mouth. I panicked. Help! Help! Ha ha, got you, Mr. Smith. <laughs> Then he leapt out of the bed and did a victory lap down the corridor, backless hospital gown exposing everything. <laughs> then he looked back and winked at me. Now you can see why they call the intensive care unit the ICU. <laughs> now five years have passed and McDreamy doesn't make me quite so McSteamy, but I am still the easiest target to terrorise. But in the end, it doesn't really matter. Do you know what they call the person who graduates lowest in their medical class? Doctor. <laughs>